Hi everyone, glad you're here with me today. Um, today's video is going to be about the aging process in the eye region. And I decided to do this video because usually the earliest signs of aging happen in the eye region. And I'm gonna probably break this up into three videos because there's a lot to talk about. So I'll split them into the three categories of aging around the eye. The first is going to be the structural changes, which include bone resorption and fat and fat resorption and so the hollowing that, that results from that. The second is going to be the changes in the actual skin, the skin thinning and laxity, crepiness, and the treatments and prevention for that. And lastly is going to be the developmental, the development of dark cir circles around the eye and the causes and treatments for that. So I think each one will have to be an individual video. So if any of those topics interest you, um, just uh, either hit the notification bell to know when I post the next video or just check back. Today we're going to do the structural changes, so the bone and fat loss. Um, before I get started, I want to thank everyone who is subscribing to my channel. I love watching it grow. I'm having so much fun interacting with you skin lovers out there. And um, so please feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, leave me a comment. It's so fun to chat with you. And with that, let's get started. As we age, what happens in the skull, the bone, and the foundation of our face is that there is something called bone resorption, which means that basically the bone is shrinking. So our orbits are really nice and small when we're young, and as we get older, the orbital rims or the eye sockets increase in size. That's why when you see very elderly people, they often have hollows or sunken eyes because their, their eyeball is the same in size, but the socket has gotten bigger. And another change that occurs is that the fat pads in our skin um, decrease in size and shrink. And we have fat pads, we have fat pads all throughout our face, and we have fat pads in different layers. They sort of add, act as buffers to help the sliding of contracting muscles as we smile and as we animate our faces. It's, it's just a nice gliding surface and it also gives volume for the, for the face and um, support to the muscles. So we have fat that sits right on the bone and then we have um, fat compartments that are just underneath all of our skin. And that's why when you squeeze the cheeks of kids and babies, you know, they're so nice and juicy and plump because they have so much fat in their skin. All of their fat pockets are fully filled and that's why have, they have that beautiful look. And as we age, when you start to see the tear troughs and the festoons and the eye hollowing, all those symptoms are a result of basically bone shrinking and fat pockets shrinking. What can we do about it? So the first thing you can do at home yourself is make sure you take a vitamin D supplement. And vitamin K2 has been shown to um, slow down bone resorption. So it can really help the structural shape of your face not age as quickly and not resorb as quickly. So those are two products you could take at home. The simplest way to treat the volume loss from bone shrinking would be to replace that volume loss or to fill it again. And so the most common way of treating this is by filler injection with either hyaluronic acid fillers like the Restylane products or the Juvederm products, or we can use Radiace, which is not a hyaluronic acid product and it does last longer. So there are pluses and minuses to both. If you wanna try something out for the first time, you probably don't want a product that's gonna last a very long time because you wanna first check whether you like it or not, whether the injector style is something that's suitable to you, that you like their results that they produce. So usually you might wanna start out with a shorter acting product like a hyaluronic acid filler versus a longer lasting product like Radius. You can have these fillers injected deep on the bone and they essentially 
fill in where the fat has been lost and the bone has been lost. That can be done deeply on the bone or it can be done relatively superficially underneath the skin with the right um, fillers because some fillers that go underneath the skin cause a discoloration of the skin called a Tyndall effect. And you, so you have to choose the right filler for the right location and depth that's, that is being placed in the face. But the cannula and the needle approach can treat the tear troughs, the festoons, which are lower down, and the hollowing around the eye. In the right hands, it's a very safe injection. In the wrong hands, it can have disastrous effects. So you don't want to go on a Groupon. You don't want to look for the cheapest deal around. You really actually want to look for a person who is well-educated, who knows what they're doing, because the mastery of this injection is the key to success. If you don't want to be injecting a filler into your face because for whatever reason, say you don't want a foreign substance in your body, uh, you can, there is the option of fat transfer. You can go to someone who will take fat cells from another area of your body and they can inject the fat into the areas of volume depletion this process can have unpredictable results and it has to be done slowly over multiple sessions. Uh, the reason for this is in a fat transfer, about 30 to 40% of the fat cells actually take. Uh, in other words, they stay and they, they are, remain alive and they integrate into, into your cell structure or your skin structure. And you never know exactly how well which ones will take and which ones won't make it. Fat transfers just have a little bit of an unpredictable result, but that is something you can do that doesn't involve um, a hyaluronic acid or a foreign product. It uses your own body's fat cells. The most invasive option for treating volume loss in the periorbital area is placing an implant in the region of the cheek. This can be done when there's significant um, volume loss, and usually it's related to medical um, illnesses, such as whether it's a history of trauma and deformity or um, things like osteogenesis imperfecta. So that's the most drastic um, option in restoring volume in this area. That's everything for structural changes in the periorbital area and the associated treatments. Next time I will talk about skin changes related to aging. And until then, I hope you stay well and I'll see you soon. Bye.